We hit the record. This meeting is being recorded. Great, thank you. Uh, so thanks everyone for joining us this afternoon to learn about Jane's Walk. Uh, as you may already know, Jane's Walk is a global festival of free walking conversations uh, led by volunteers and inspired by activist Jane Jacobs. So if you don't already know, uh, Jane Jacobs was a famous activist and writer who lived from 1916 to 2006. And she's best known for galvanizing her neighbors to stop an expressway from being uh, built throughout their community in Greenwich Village in New York City. She believed in the power of individuals to influence their cities and towns. And her principles represent the participatory planning approaches that have been embraced in communities around the world. As a result, uh, a festival was created in her name. Uh, Jane's Walk takes place in more than 200 cities and towns around the globe. Uh, it is in honor of her birthday, uh, which is May 4th. So it's the first weekend in May every year. And uh, this year in Maine, we're holding Jane's Walk on Saturday, May 6th. Uh, last year was the inaugural year of Jane's Walk in Maine. Uh, we had great fun with more than 300 participants in 11 cities and towns. Uh, Ellsworth, Bangor, Stonington, and Portland are all pictured here. And you'll hear some, you'll, you'll hear from some of last year's walk leaders and participants a little bit later on. Uh, here's a list of walks that we had last year. We had more than 20 and topics covered history, community visioning, the natural environment, and much, much more. So the most important thing to know about Jane's Walk is that literally anyone can lead one. You're an expert in your own experience of your community and you have plenty to share. So remember, this isn't a lecture, it's a walking conversation and you'll be learning from folks participating in your walk as well. Two elements that great, make for a great walk topic are incorporating interactivity in some way and getting off the beaten track. Uh, think about engaging a group in a participatory activity or something experiential like a scavenger hunt or bringing them to parts of the community that they would not normally see. But of course, the starting place is something that's of interest to you. I'm sure you'll find that folks are interested, interested in that as well. The average Jane's walk is about 60 to 90 minutes, and we recommend uh, seven to 10 stops. Uh, so pick a precise meeting location, an exact street address or a public landmark that's easily accessible. Think about the story you're trying to tell to help map out your walk sequence of spots. Use Google Maps to plot your route and factor in walking time in between stops. Practice your route beforehand. Uh, Identify good places to gather a group that are close to the features of the streetscape or landmarks that you wanna point out. We recommend inviting a friend to join you as you practice your route to offer feedback and consider accessibility. Uh, everyone experiences spaces differently. So you can think broadly and empathetically about how others might feel along your route. You can indicate walk accessibility in your submission description. And be mindful of areas that are not accessible to the public and seek permission before leading your walk onto any private property. So uh, what are the keys to success for a Jane's walk? Well, first of all, you don't have to lead your walk alone. Oftentimes walks are led by more than one person, which can help to create a more dynamic, comfortable, fun, and conversational walk. Uh, for example, last year in Stonington, I think each stop featured a different speaker. Uh, so that was a great way to take the burden off of a single walk leader. Um, but it also doesn't have to be as formal or as curated as that. Uh, but it's just helpful to, uh, to know that you don't need to be on your own. Uh, and in fact, <laughs> maybe though, even if you don't have someone helping you to, uh, to lead your walk, you might want someone who's going to be there to uh, rally up the stragglers at the end, uh, you know, if you get stopped at, at traffic lights uh, to make sure that, that people are making their way, um, you've got some slower folks along the route. Um, it's helpful to have someone else there. It's helpful to have someone there to take pictures uh, to kind of help answer questions along your way. 
Uh, so we definitely recommend, if not co-leading your walk, having someone there with you. Your walk can be enhanced uh, with historic photos that show then and now of what you're looking at, or a single map showing the stops that you plan to make so that in case folks get lost, they can find you or that they have a record of the walks that they took and can share the information with others. Uh, we also think it can be kind of fun to end your walk at a local business or a community gathering spot to keep the conversation going. Uh, at the beginning of your walk on the on the very day, uh, be sure to start by introducing yourself, maybe tell a little bit about who Jane Jacobs was and if in any way she's inspired you in your walk and what the festival is all about. You might ask participants where they're coming from, uh, how they heard about your walk and what made them interested in participating. Then moving from introductions, uh, make sure don't, that you don't walk and talk at the same time. Challenging for folks to hear you uh, and you're gonna need to, to make sure that they do. Um, so remember to speak loudly, gather your group in quiet spots, potentially stand on an elevated stair or on a park bench uh, in order for them to hear you and consider wearing something that's easy to spot from a distance, a brightly colored shirt or hat that might let people know that you're there to, to be guiding them. Uh, make sure that in your walk, you are open to dialogue. Uh, for example, ask the crowd if anyone remembers the building's previous use or if they can spot a significant architectural detail. Don't be afraid to ask the group to answer a question if you don't know. So if somebody who's participating asks you something and you don't have that background knowledge, maybe someone else on the walk might know. And that's part of the, the way that this is a conversational uh, dialogue between all of the participants. And like I said, not an expertly led uh, walking tour, but really a, a way to share in community about the topic that you have selected. Uh, and finally, make sure to capture the fun. It's always great to see photos from Jane's walk and hear how people felt about their experience. Uh, this is what will help us keep building this celebration and this movement in communities across Maine, getting folks activated into observation uh, and, uh, and advocacy around their communities. So uh, make sure that, that we have some photos to show uh, what, what the day was like. Uh, and I will drop a link in the chat. It's also available in the FAQ, but uh, we'll be collecting those photos via a Google Drive. Um, so what will we do uh, to, promote, uh, to promote, promote the festival? Uh, well, we have some funding from the main office of tourism, thank you very much, uh, to be uh, putting out print ads as well as radio and digital promotion for these walks. Um, but we'd like to, to have you all help in that effort as well. So um, please feel free to uh, reshare posts on Facebook, on Instagram. We've got a flyer. Uh, I'll put a link in the chat uh, so that you can even you know, go a little bit more analog and you could post the flyer in local businesses or the local library. Uh, we've got a Facebook event page uh, that you can share and invite your friends to attend. Um, there will be sending out e-blasts. Uh, so if you're, you're on Portland Downtown's list or you're on Maine Preservation's list or Maine Downtown Center, you'll have access to those materials as well. And uh, with that, uh, I'm going to ask one of my colleagues to talk about their experience of leading a walk last year, what they're planning for this year, and then we'll open it up to a Q&A. Uh, so I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see all your faces. All right, Carrie, tell us about your walk last year and what you're planning to do this year. I will. Thanks, Tara, and thanks for, for your leadership on this. Y'all, we're very fortunate to have Tara Kelly here in so many ways and reasons, uh, not the least of which is her background in Jane's Walk and her previous jobs. Uh, you know, this some of this a little bit sort of started. There was a Jane's Walk a number of years ago uh, that, that just sort of... Uh, 
went away, I guess, because for various reasons. And it's something I'd hoped when I joined Portland downtown to really bring back. It's I'm a big fan of Jane Jacobs. If you've seen me, I'm not, not in my office today, but those of you who've been on meetings with me, uh, know, uh, and I've known a lot of your faces, you'll see a life and death of uh, American cities is uh, one of the the two things I have hanging on my wall. I happened to be in an event the first time I met Tara. This has been well over, um, going on nearly two years ago, I guess, wearing a Jane Jacobs um, uh, lapel pin. And, you know, that's how we struck up a conversation. And I was just so thrilled to learn about her background and her interest uh, in, in helping this. And it's been a great partnership ever since. So I'm so appreciative of that. Um, with that in mind, let me briefly tell you about our walk last year, the one I led, the one my friend CJ at Friends of Congress Square Park led, and some others that happened in both Portland and Westbrook that I participated in. Uh, mine was called Imagine Places Here as a little bit of a nod to my friends at the Bicycle Coalition of Maine uh, who uh, have their Imagine People Here program, which I'm a big fan of and have participated in. Uh, and if you haven't, I, that's a plug for the BCM who does great work uh, along with AARP. And mine was the, the surface parking lots of downtown Portland. Uh, so we had a lovely walking conversation that started in my office. I did a little bit of research, thanks to my help uh, from our friends at Greater Portland Landmarks, who are here and one of our partners, showing uh, what those empty spaces that are currently empty spaces in downtown Portland were. Talked a little bit about the history, history of why they uh, went away. Uh, and what the plans for the future of them are, which in some cases, there were many plans. And in some cases, there were no plans at all. And even in the last year, we've seen one of those spots right next to City Hall, uh, the top of the East parking lot, which is, you know, has passed its uh, preliminary hurdles to for some development that's happening there. So uh, as an urbanist, as a person who, who works in downtown, you know, uh, surface parking lots are the thing I I, I care for the least. Uh, and so I wanted to begin the conversation about what uh, would be an improvement in those spaces and what would help our, our urban fabric in our downtown. But my friend CJ at Friends of Congress Square Park, who also we're very fortunate, who's on vacation today, but he led Jane's Walks in Providence, Rhode Island for a number of years. So we've got Got quite a, a, a team here with the history, uh, not me, but the rest of our folks. Uh, and he did one called uh, the gargoyles of uh, um, gar gargoyles and grotesques of downtown where we just started at congress square park walked all around downtown and looked up which is something a lot of people don't always do and saw some incredible architectural details that not everybody sees so there's all sorts of different ways to do this uh the one i'm leading this year uh, is with our friends at Portland Trails, and I'm excited about it. Uh, it's in the Gorham's Corner area in downtown. That's by the John Ford statue uh, for some of you, or Yosaku uh, Sushi for, for the rest of you who, who uh, when you come downtown, that's in that area, which has changed over time. Uh, we are working with, uh, like I said, Portland Trails to do a little bit of a uh, tactical intervention this summer uh, because it is quite the intersection and uh, it has some opportunities for improvement in safety and design. And there is a master plan for that, but we're going to take uh, a tactical approach through the summer and do some experimentation, talk a little bit about the history of there, talk about why we came up with this idea, what the idea would be if we had uh, a healthy am amount of money. Uh, hopefully that will come in the future and the studying we're doing and how we can work to improve the neighborhood. So should be a, a fun uh, walk. I hope those of you who are in the greater Portland area and are not leading uh, walks will join us. Uh, except Tara, who's shaking her head, says she can't make it because she's in Bath and, and helping. Uh, I'm walks. saying these people are leading walks. Don't distract them. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, but if you're in the greater Portland, we can all work together. And and now we, I, the, it's a fun day, you know, CJ and I call it the, one of the two big holidays in our world next to a uh, small business Saturday and Jane's walk Saturday, where we just go all day and go to every walk we can. It's a, it's a lot of fun. We had a great time last year and uh, we ended up with a little bit of, as Tara suggested, celebration uh, spot. Uh, we went to Ruski's, but we can go anywhere this year. So uh, it, it, happy to answer questions, excited to hear about your walk. 
folks excited uh, to participate if you're in the greater Portland area, if we can all work together to time them in such a way where we can uh, all sort of support each other. So it's it's a great opportunity for those of us who are in nonprofit and governments to engage future volunteers, it, interested constituents, uh, community, neighborhood. It's a way to, to, I know our friends at Woodford's Corner are doing some real, have some fun plans for this I've heard about. Uh, so it's a, it's a great way to build partnerships and um, move move the needle uh, in our world of, of urbanism and placemaking and preservation uh, and space activation. So excited to hear, happy to answer questions. Thanks to our friends at uh, uh, MOT and um, other, other spots for their support and sponsorship. And thanks for the leadership of Tara and uh, many of our other partners as well. So happy to, happy to hear more. Thanks, Carrie. Um, just from my experience last year, I uh, I went to the I went to the walk in Bangor, the Bangor Fire of 1911, uh, and it was you know my first time actually being in Bangor, and I got to hear like some deep history and uh, explore the city. I think in a different way than I would have otherwise. Really noting the buildings that obviously uh, were pre-fire and those that were built since. So um, you know that's kind of a straight up kind of more history-based Jane's Walk uh, with, you know, a little bit of an architectural focus, but there was one in uh, in Gardner that was called Ospreys and Alewives, and so that had more of a nature focus, or reading the Shabig landscape was also looking at the natural environment. Uh, there was a focus on foodways in Biddeford with Biddeford Garden to Table, uh, so there's all kinds of ways uh, to, you know, really get people a having a great title um but you know having having don't think that this has to be purely about history or about architecture it really can be about anything and the idea is just to get people out observing and in conversation um and as as carrie said you know in one of my main interest in in having the festival here was that jane's walk weekend for me in new york city was was kind of like the best weekend of the year, there was like more than 300 walks, all free, and just mapping out your route and deciding where you're going to go, um, and learning about all of the different, um, learning about the topics, but also all of the different organizations and partners who came together to put the walks on, and so I think that that's another benefit here is really sharing our audiences, uh, so that you might sign on thinking, I'm going to go to something in Portland, because that's what Carrie keeps talking about, but then you find that something amazing is happening in some other corner of the state. And then you also notice that maybe you, if, you, if you swing it right, you can drive another hour from there and get to a different Jane's Walk uh, and make a full day of it, that you are you know, learning about different, different things happening across the state and cross-pollinating. And so as the festival gets bigger and bigger, there's more and more of that. Um, so uh, with that, I'd love to open it up to questions. I'm not sure if anybody on here led a walk last year. So if you did and want to share about that experience or participated in one, would love to hear about that. Um, would love to hear about what folks are thinking about for topics and just really any kind of question, happy to answer. Don't all go at once. It's the first question that's the hardest. Okay, I'll, I'll jump in. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So um, I'm curious because I'm thinking about leading a walk in Booth Bay Harbor. And I'm curious, you know, to, to learn about how other smaller communities sort of, you know, um, decided on, on, on their approach, their theme, if you will, because you know, you know, obviously I'm going to reach out to some other folks, but that seems like a big deal to me, like landing on the theme. Um, so I'm just curious to hear about how other communities went through the process of doing that. This is, I, I can speak to a go ahead, go ahead. I'm Karen uh, Knox and I live in Hollowell and we did our first Jane's Walk last year. And um, we kind of jumped into it late in the game too. I think it was like three or four weeks before 
the date. Um, and Vision Hollowell, which is an all volunteer group. And um, we've got 2,700 people here in Hollowell. It's the smallest city in the state. But um, we just did some low hanging fruit, if you will. We already have a history in the streets thing. So we kind of did a little walk following the history in the, in the streets. So something that kind of always already existed, we highlighted it this year because we it was such a so much fun and such a success. We thought we're going to be meeting to come up with another idea, and this time maybe it will be one that um, takes a little more research. Or now we have more time to do it. So just grab a. Uh, that proverbial low-hanging fruit you have in your town that people just may need to be reminded is there and just as easy. Don't get too worried about it or too nervous about it. It can be the simplest thing. And um, once you've done it, once you'll be hooked and you'll be thinking about it throughout the year and next year won't be seem so big. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's exactly right and credit to them. I love Hollowell and that's a great neck of the woods. I, I would just only add from my perspective in talking with people about this over the last year, it's picking something that you're any that leader is passionate about, whatever that might be. It's just that thing that you think that maybe the conversation needs to happen in that community about X, Y, Z. Uh, and, and, and I think Tara said it right on. It's a walking conversation. You don't need to prepare a lecture. You know, you just need to have some, some, some passion about that issue. In my case, it happened to be, you know, surface parking lots and CJ loved the, the gargoyles and grotesques. And, you know, I also think you can just be inspired by walking around your, that uh, community and just look, you know, try to uh, look through a new set of eyes and think, okay, what would make a good James walk? You know, is it the, the, the park, you know, the park trails or whatever the case may be, um, that that because that leads to great co walking conversations and that's the the fun of it at least for me yeah and i don't i have a lot of jumping off points abby but um you know i don't know enough of booth data to, to steer you towards one thing or another but you know just for example if you wanted to say you know what was this community like is there some kind of hook like what was this community like 100 years ago and you pick four buildings that were standing a hundred years ago. And then you tell a little story about them and that sort of like just helps to shape the picture of what that community would have looked like. Like that's just one way to kind of go about it. I think you can think about, um, you know, a restaurant tour, you know, the different kind of food available in Booth Bay, because it is gonna, it will be local, but it may also be people coming from, from elsewhere um, you know, it could be kind of ship to shore. What's the relationship of the harbor to the inland buildings? Um, you know, how has that changed over time? Or what are the connections, you know, that there were potentially ship captains? But you know, like, I don't know, we can, I'm happy to continue to brainstorm with you, but there's just, you, you can do anything. And I know that that's overwhelming, but trust yourself. So my name is Jim Stenberg and um, I live in Stroudwater, a port area of port, Portland. Um, and I'm also involved with the Tate House. So uh, I'm thinking uh, of trying to incorporate some of that um, into, into something. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little curious um, about the Jane Jacobs tie. And yeah, I heard what you said at the beginning, but I'm wondering if you could maybe embellish on that a little more. So I, I understand the, the concept that was behind this. Um, and, and then I, you know, but was, um, I forgot who it was who just said that, but, you know, we were saying low hanging fruit. I mean, there's a, a lot of already published walks for our neighborhood. So um, shouldn't be hard to tie that together. But um, if you could give a little more background. Carrie, since she's your patron saint, do you want to go? <laughs> sure. I, I mean, 
Yeah, where to start, right? Jane Jacobs, of course, prolific author and urbanist and a person who believed in the power of people, uh, as I think Tara hinted at earlier. Uh, and, and it's in her spirit that we're trying to activate or engage a community to, 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 to be a, a singular voice in things that they find important. So it's, it's just through her writings and through her world, world uh, her work uh, that this this weekend is a global festival and a tribute to, to those ideas and ideals. Um, so, I, I mean, I think that's the background of the Jane Jacobs side of things. Um, so, and then, you know, to the walks part of it, I think, you know, doing a sort of pre-written quote unquote uh, tour is a perfectly uh, acceptable and great way to do things as is doing something new uh, and, and, and different. Both, both work really well. Um, it's ways that, that folks re really will get out and explore their neighborhood and, and think of things through a lens maybe they haven't thought about before. Um, so, so both ways are great ways to do it. It's just whichever is sort of fits the walk leader's passion. Yeah, and just so the for Jane Jacobs, I think the the most important relationship uh, between her legacy and the festival is that, as Carrie said, she believed in individuals having the capacity to really impact uh, where they lived and where they worked, so that. Um, you know, it's, it's a place-based festival in that, like, you know, now that we're out of, we're, we're sort of out of the pandemic, it's happening in, in a real place and in time. Um, I did run a festival that was over Zoom and we did our best, but, um, you know, so it's a place focus um, and it's just creating the empowerment for folks to feel that they have any kind of participation or influence. And where that begins is with observation. She believes uh, very strongly in kind of people um, having eyes on the street, how that improved safety specifically in the community that she was living in, and that that kind of evolves into like, you know, well, we as individuals have eyes on the street in terms of like, you know, what we want to see in our communities. And so like, that's how we can get engaged and we can get involved. Um, so there is at the end of the day, a sort of advocacy component of this, but it's not academic in terms of what the walks are about. And it's not purely about her principles and it's not purely about, um, as Carrie said, you know, historic preservation or community planning, but really just getting people out and paying attention to their surroundings and perhaps being inspired to talk about their experience with someone else to maybe lead a Jane's walk in the next year, um, to share their experience within that walk. Uh, so that's that's the tie. Um, that's the tie there. And I I see the hands. So let's. Uh, I think Margot was first. You're muted. You're muted. I'm Margot Georgi from Wayne, and um, we're, my husband and I are thinking about doing a Jane's Walk. Dean, my husband, had done something similar maybe about five or so years ago, and it was really fun. And one of the things that worked for him was he did a PDF that he shared. People were able to download onto their phone or an iPad or something, um, just showing some of the old buildings that used to be here because it was a, a mill town where it had some mills um, that are no longer here. Um, so that was really fun. But I just, I, I'm sorry, I came in late and I wanted to ask a couple of questions. I apologize if it's redundant, but um, are they at any time we want to have them? Or are they supposed to be at the same time? Everybody holds theirs the same time of day. They could be at any time. I think we kind of have a like, nine beginning at nine ending by six uh just for you know what people are going to most likely participate in and we kind of have to manage a little bit of the back end uh in case somebody can't find you they're going to be contacting us so we don't want right, 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 <laughs> to be right, right. on the clock too late um but i would say anytime within that yeah, six. 
Okay. Um, and then I thought about, I think in Southern Maine, you all have something where there's like a, a front porch concert or something. Is that Cape Elizabeth or South Portland or something? But I wondered, could we have music on like different, on people's stoops or something like that? Mm -hmm. oh, I think that's yeah. a great idea. I love those port. That's here in one of the neighborhoods in Portland. And I mean, it's a, it's a great event. And I've seen those in other places I've been and traveled to and lived. And I love a porch fest uh, where there's music and, you know, local food and uh, re relaxing beverages, if you so choose. And it could be, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it could highlight businesses too, right? Mm -hmm. Like that. Yeah, so Not one of the things one of the things that Ellsworth did last year was they made an arrangement with a local cafe who gave them little uh, discount uh, gift certificates mm. for the walk participants. And one of the things that I said earlier that you may have missed is that it's often nice to lead your walk to then to an end point to sit down and have a cup of coffee or grab a beer and everybody can kind of just debrief on their experience, continue the conversation so that you're, but you're not walking anymore. You might, your legs might be tired. Um, but it's a, it's a great way to, to kind of support the local businesses in the community and, uh, and to build that network and community amongst the walk participants. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Eva. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm Eva from the city of South Portland. And um, if you wouldn't mind reiterating just um, the first steps for a community that might uh, like to host a Jane's Walk. Um, also, I'm wondering from com uh, communities who have hosted them in the past, what are your, what are some suggestions, advice you have for um, promoting accessibility? Yeah, well, you can submit. Uh, Ava was our intern last year at Portland Downtown, and she does great work there. Uh, and glad that she's uh, engaged in the, in the neighboring community. Um, and you can submit. Tara, put that in the chat. Anything you want there. Now we'll be echoing that in our PR campaign uh, on the both statewide and regional level. As Tara noted earlier, there's some. Um, uh, funding this year, which we didn't have last year. We will be issuing some media releases, uh, uh, both as sort of as a collective and then each organization we encourage uh, to do that for their e either locality or region. Um, yeah, we can share that presentation, absolutely. Um, and um, so, so that's what, uh, as far as accessibility, I, I assume you mean like eight ADA accessibility. I encourage folks to walk the route in advance. I know I did that in my case uh, to make sure that it was accessible for folks uh, that that needed that kind of accommodation. Uh, I was very mindful about the route. That is a, a, a good note and a tip that you should, well, I would encourage you to walk it yourself because you can, uh, and, and in my case, I did that. And then our, um, our walking conversation had some other ideas that we should go to other spots. So we were just very careful uh, as far as like being accommodating because we did have a person uh, who, who needed um, some uh, assistance and the like. So we just, we sort of detoured off that unexpectedly, but uh, that was the will of the group. So that's where we went. We just tried to be thoughtful and mindful to folks. Yeah, you know, in, in more um, dense areas, obviously being mindful of where crosswalks are and where, where stop signs and stop lights are for where you might stop and gather people and where you're gonna cross the street to head. Um, you know, as Terry said, walking the route, you, you know, it's, it's, it's great to map it out fully in advance, um, you know, digitally, but the, the characteristics on the street when you're really thinking about, is this gonna be easy? for others to do um, will be more evident to you as you're out on the ground and, you know, can account for things like construction um, that might be going on if uh, that wouldn't, you wouldn't see that on, on Google Maps. So definitely walk it uh, and walk it with someone else uh, practicing. Yeah. And then again, just reiterating that my group last year wanted to take a, you know, they were like, let's go look at XYZ at this other spot. 
I loved that. I was happy. I wasn't prepared for that, but I loved it because that meant they were engaged and, you know, uh, had questions and thoughts and were passionate about something. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. We'll go that way. So that, to me, that was fun. Yeah. And something that I'd like to share about, um, about the dynamic of it being a conversation uh, a few years ago, I was on a walk that was led by uh a young man, probably about 25, who was uh, really, really interested in hip hop history. <laughs> and he led a walk of hip hop nightclubs in Times Square. And the, the other folks who were on the walk, they were all older and kind of, they showed up and said, well, I, I was there. I've, I went to that dance club. I went to that nightclub and he, was learning so much from them and it was so different from him having watched documentaries or reading books or reading articles to like learn about this topic like instead he was talking to people who had lived it and experienced it and it was just the most delightful exchange to witness um so you know i i don't know about the hip club hip-hop nightclubs of maine but uh you know we really do encourage it to be that kind of a dynamic where the walk leader is just as interested in hearing from the participants about what their observations are. Um, and so that's why we encourage something that's, that's interactive. Uh, we encourage uh, kind of getting off the beaten path and encourage asking questions of the participants and, and not just kind of, not just sharing the knowledge out, but taking it in. Um, Yes, we've got a question. Catherine? Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Kathy Gerard. I'm with the Gorham Village Alliance. Um, we focus on improving the downtown area of Gorham. Um, kind of a two-part question and related, but what is the attendance like at a, a typical Jane walk as far as numbers? And do you just have people show up? Is it a good idea to have them register? Um, how does that work? Thank you. So thank you. Uh, it's a great question. And unfortunately, there's there's no answer for what's typical. Uh, last year, uh, I believe few of our walks had more than 80 people. And then I went on a walk that had about four. So it, it really runs the gamut. Uh, at this time, uh, there is not registration that it would be offered through us. Um, because of the sort of principles around Jane's walk, um, the idea is for it to be as sort of easily accessible as possible, uh, lowering barriers to entry. Um, but I do understand uh, that that can be anxiety producing when you don't know how many people are gonna show up. Um, that is one of the other reasons why we definitely recommend having someone with you um, as a co-host or volunteer so that if you do have a really large crowd, uh, you can do a little bit of crowd control. Uh, but I do think the ones that were the biggest had a fair amount of publicity from those walk leaders who were really um, touting their walk. So I wouldn't expect that to be normal. I would say, I would say over the years of, of running this festival, um, it's probably most likely to be 10 to 15 people. Yeah, I had 15 on mine last year. I think CJ uh, had 20, and I also went on one that had three or four uh, attended. Um, so, and that was fun too, because I mean, we had, you know, those three or four passionate people interested in the subject. And so we were just, you know, had, had a good conversation and it was a nice day and walked around. So, Sylvie, did I see that you had a question before? I did, but it was answered. Thanks. And actually, can I ask, um, is it end of the month that the submissions are due? The deadline is March 31st. Awesome. Um, and then uh, what will happen from there is we'll be spending some time getting those up onto our website. And then from roughly uh, April 15th or thereabouts, up until the festival on May 6th is when we'll be promoting the walks. Uh, so that's why it's, it's important to make it to the deadline so that we have that information in hand when we send out a press release 
uh, and when we begin the, the walk promotion. And as I mentioned earlier, and that Carrie reiterated, we do have funding this year to support promotion of the festival. Um, and so, you know, we want you to be included in that. Thanks. Sounds like we're winding down. So I'll just uh, note that I uh, am more than happy to uh, take a call, answer an email, whatever the case may be, shoot me a text, gchat, uh, anywhere between now and March 31st or anytime, really. If you have a question, if you wanna run an idea past someone just for a separate set of ears. Uh, so um, I'm more than happy to, to, to do that if that's helpful for anyone. Great. Well, um, I had put the link in the in the chat that includes uh, our FAQ is there, which basically is, is very much like this presentation, uh, has a, some of the same information, a little more detail. Um, it's got the submission link uh, to submit your walk. Um, we do ask that you include a photo so that we can use that for the promotion. Um, deadline March 31st. Uh, we'll be releasing the walks um, around the second week of April, and uh, and then Jane's walk is Saturday, May 6th. So uh, really happy to have you all here this afternoon. I, I hope we have further inspired you and, and not scared you all away. Um, also willing to, to answer questions, uh, and um, I hope that you guys all go ahead and lead a walk. Thank you both. This is awesome. I can't wait. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.